Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by Titan FC Bantamweight, Kevin Kroom. Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Kevin, you got a fight coming up February 28th at Titan FC 27. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, man, training's excellent. Training's excellent. Everything's going really good. Um, I'm really excited. Really excited about this fight. Mm-hmm. Are you still training out of Jackson's? Um, so I am. I'm in Albuquerque. I, right. I, I train with uh, Ira Latrell's MMA now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like uh, it's kind of Greg Jackson's sister school. Uh, Chris Latrell is Greg Jackson's first uh, black belt, mm-hmm. and right. uh, he's been a part of the coaching staff for Jackson's for years. And uh, he just kind of set up his own school, and so uh, that, that's uh, where I've been training at now. Mm-hmm. Who are some of the guys that you train with there? Uh, I mean. Uh, you know, uh, they still have, you know, I still do a lot of sparring at Jackson's and okay. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, all the all the normal guys over there, Donald Cerrone, all those people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On February 28th, you're going to be taking on Brian Goldsby. What are your thoughts about him as an opponent? Um, I mean, I think uh, he's incredibly athletic. Um, he's, a, he's a really athletic fighter. Um and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I definitely, there's definitely a few things I have to watch out for. I mean, he's incredibly explosive. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, man, that, that's, that's what I got to think about. I mean, I think he's, uh, I think he's a really tough and a uh, really explosive fighter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you wouldn't have taken this fight if you didn't think this was a fight that you could win. So where do you feel you have the advantage in this fight? Um, I, mean, I mean, honestly, uh, I feel like I'm technically the better fighter. Um, mm-hmm. All around, honestly, um, mm-hmm. I do. I, I think I'm better on my feet, and I think I'm better on the ground. So uh, I mean, uh, you know, wherever wherever it goes, I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people know you for your ground game because you you've locked on so many submissions and, and you've submitted a lot of guys. But you pack serious power for bantamweight. I don't know too many guys who have the, the knockout power and the, the heavy hands that you do at this weight class. Where do you feel you're better? Are you better on the ground or are you better standing? Oh, man, you know, I, I really just uh, just kind of started, like, getting the stand-up uh, game down, you mm-hmm. know? Like, right. uh, I just got it. Um, my coaches in the last couple of years, uh, I started training with uh, Ray Yee out of uh, Albuquerque Kickboxing. Um, right. And uh, he's really been uh, stepping up my Muay Thai. And then I've also been training with uh, Daniel Romero, who's a three time world champion boxer. Um, and, you know, and, and this has all just happened in the last year. Uh, so, you know, my stand up game is elevating incredibly quickly. Um, so, I mean, you asked me where I felt more comfortable. I, I don't know, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Now, 2013 was a great year for you. You won seven fights, all seven by stoppage, and all seven in the first round. Grade yourself on no, 2013. I, I won, it's got to be an A. I won eight fights. Oh. Seven first round finishes. Eight fights in 2013 because I thought the, the eight f- fights in 2013, seven oh. first round finishes. Oh, I didn't see I didn't see the eighth fight on on your record there. I saw <laughs> I saw a 2012 fight. So you're currently on a nine fight win streak. I'm on a nine fight win streak, oh. baby. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine nine wins, eight eight stoppages. Is that right? Or seven stoppages? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh, oh wait, no, it's seven seven nine wins, seven first round stoppages. But. Oh. Kevin, I think your best performance in this win streak is the second fight against Brian Davidson that happened at RFA 6. You ended up defeating him by first-round TKO. The first time you guys fought under the Bellator banner, you submitted him. But this time around, when you fought him in RFA, a lot of people thought that he was going to be much more improved, and a lot of people thought that he was going to end up TKOing you because he's a high-level Taekwondo guy and he was on a nice little win streak at the time. He just beat Jens Pulver. So a lot of people thought that he should be the favorite going into that fight, even though you had beaten him earlier. So I'd say that's probably your best performance in this win streak. But what do you think is your best performance? Is it the Brian Davidson fight, or is there another fight in there that you think was better than that one? Uh, I mean, I... I, I don't know, you know, uh, the one uh, Dustin Phillips, yeah, Dustin that was Phillips a good one. for Titan. Mm-hmm. That was, yep. you know, that was a good one too. Um, I feel like 
the one with the thing with RFA is that kind of like everybody was doubting me, you right. know, and yeah. and that kind of like I was really pissed off going into that fight because I beat the kid before and I'd moved to Jackson's and nobody was giving me mm. any credit. Everybody thought he was right. gonna, you know, just run through me, man. Like, you know, like I, I heard in the interview about him talking about, you know, like so it just it just uh, really upset me. And so yeah, I mean, I'd say that's probably like. You know the big point, and it is just it, like you said. You know, it got people. It got people on Team Crew. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, there's not a whole lot of guys floating around on the regional circuit that are on a nine fight win streak with seven stoppages and seven in the first round. And the last time you fought for Titan, when you fought Dustin Phillips, you got on the mic and and called Joe Silva out. Basically, you said, you know, come sign me. I'm ready to be in the big show. What happened there? Did did they were they in contact with you at all? You know, why, I I find it just crazy that you're not you're not in the yeah, big show. What, uh, what's the deal? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, they they contacted some of my coaches. You know, mm-hmm. and and uh, man, they're definitely they're, they've definitely been looking out for me. You know, mm-hmm. they they've been watching me. Um, and you know, that's really all I have to say about it. You know, and, and it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me um, at this point. You know. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm paying my bills and I'm, I'm winning fights, um, and so you know, I, I'm going to keep doing both of those things until they call me. So it doesn't matter, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Now, what about Bellator? The first time you fought Brian Davidson, that was under their banner, but you haven't fought for them since. Is is that a possibility? Are you open to that, or, or are you just focused on you know continuing to win fights, continuing to get paid, and eventually make it to the UFC, or or would you be open to Bellator? Yeah, I'm not really open to Bellator. I don't really like the way they do business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I figured that. I just just thought I'd ask because you know, obviously, yeah, yeah, they, I mean, obviously they're sure. they're interested. I mean, anyone who's who's doing good on the regional circuit, they're interested in that. That's not in the UFC, so that's why I had to ask. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I could be wrong, but just you know, between you and me, it's like, who? Yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm good on that mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What do you think you have to do? to get that call from the UFC and, and get signed there because right now you're basically doing everything that they say they want. You know, They want guys to be exciting. They want guys to finish fights. They want guys to pile up wins, and, and you've done all that. What do you think you have to do more? Is it more you need to get more fans you know, on board? You need, you need to get a bigger following? What do you have to do to get there? Man, uh, so at, at this point, it's like getting to the point where who wants to fight me outside right. of the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think... That's the big thing is, is they really wanted to see, um, you know, me, me take on somebody with a good record, mm-hmm. supposedly, you know. Um, right. But what what's it going to take to get that call, man? I'm just going to keep doing everything I'm doing, you know. Um, I love my life. I wake up. I train hard every day, you know. Like, uh, this is this is what I do. I'm just going to keep doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Have you tried out for the Ultimate Fighter in the past at all? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I did. I tried out um, uh, when uh, the for when John Dotson when the okay. year John Dotson mm-hmm. won. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I was I was going to uh, try out for the last one, the last at one thirty five. Right. But you know, I talked to my uh, my buddy uh, Bubba McDaniel's mm-hmm. who right. had just. Uh, fought on the show, and he told me that if I did the show, I should probably do the weight class up. So I wanted to wait, um, wait, wait until the next one forty-five. Tough. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Do you have a multiple fight contract with Titan? Because you fought for them in the past. Uh, do you have a multiple fight deal, or do you just have a good enough relationship where you just do one one offs with them uh, here and there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I just got a good relationship with with uh, the matchmaker and and uh, and Joe. Now, how many fights have you fought? Because I've been looking at your record. How many fights have you fought outside of Bantamweight? How many, how many fights have you fought above this weight class? Uh, shoot. Um, I mean, I've only fought, I fought three fights in Bantamweight. Oh, really? You know, only, only two only two in Bantamweight. So, yeah, the, the rest of them have all been in featherweight or above. Hmm. Yeah, because I was looking at, at this, uh, Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just you know, it's hard to find people to to fight. You know, so I jumped up to forty five. You know, to keep that streak going. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that something that you see 
being your your permanent weight class in the future, one forty five, or is that something where you're uh, just looking for fights? I think I think one thirty five is where where I'm at. You know, um, uh, and, and that's where I want to be. Um, you know, there, there have just, uh, I've just got my nutrition down, man. I've gotten everything down to a science now, um, you know, that I'm doing. Um, and so it, it's just a natural step, you know, uh, my nutrition's really good. Um, so 135 is just, just a really good weight class for me. So yeah, that, mm-hmm. that's where I'll be. Mm-hmm. Now, Kevin, I've been looking online and I found like, four or five different nicknames for you what is the official nickname you have because we have we have the the hard-hitting hillbilly we have the kremlin Kremlin. yeah kremlin we have uh the alley cat we we have a bunch of different nicknames for you what is your official nickname yeah man we're going with the hard-hitting hillbilly what's the origin of that nickname and why Uh, have you selected that above the rest i started training with danny romero um at the end of 2012 uh you know three three time world champion boxer and um you know, I, I'd been training with him for like a couple months, and he'd been calling me H H H, like Triple H. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, what is you know, like, right? Well, what's that mean? You know, but I'm not saying anything. It's Danny Romero, like whatever man, call me anything you want. You know, right? Uh, and finally, after a little while, you know, I was like, hey, man, like, what is that? And he's like, shoot, man, you're hard hitting honky. You know, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> so he was calling me the hard hitting honky. And uh, I switched it around to the hard hitting hillbilly. It's a little bit more uh, socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, when you play this fight in your head, how do you see the fight ending? Uh, I mean, I see me getting a choke. Mm-hmm. I see me getting a choke. Mm-hmm. And finishing it like that. Uh, honestly, I mean, I, I'm, I'm training for, you know, uh, Full out, full out, fifteen minute war. Trust me, I'm gonna be ready for war. But I definitely see me getting the better of them. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, Kevin. Real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, I would like to thank um, Albuquerque Drive Shaft, um, definitely Hillbilly Fightwear, um, Bell to Bell Impact, and uh, yeah, man. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who supports me. You know, I, I appreciate it, um, and uh, thank you, everybody. I, I won't disappoint. Kevin, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck February 28th at Titan FC 27 against Brian Goldsby. Thank you, sir.